On the last day of the first championship in Houston in April of 2025, first released the trailers for the upcoming 2025-2026 season. The overall theme for the season is called First Age. The first LEGO League season in particular is titled Unearthed. The 2025 season will center around the themes of exploration, ancient treasures, and some hidden surprises buried beneath the surface. The logo looks like a compass rose with binoculars, a flag, an X to mark the spot, and a circle with a horizontal line, which often represents a hill or mound in archaeology, in place of the cardinal directions. Included in the teaser for Unearthed is a first look at the new First LEGO League Challenge field for next season. We are not going to show the teaser video here this season. Instead, we'll jump right into digging through all the hidden clues we've found in the teaser and on social media to speculate on what this year's game might have in store. If you haven't seen the teaser yet, we've put a link in the description. The 2025 field features two home areas and two launch areas again, just like the last few seasons, allowing teams to strategically launch their robots closer to the mission targets and involve more team members during matches. The field design is a map of a rocky desert terrain with signs of a lost civilization including an archaeological site of a large amphitheater near the middle. Unlike in previous years, there don't seem to be multiple target areas in different places on the field this year. Instead, the large amphitheater, pictured near the center of the mat, seems to be the only target area for the delivery of game pieces or artifacts. Note that there seems to be a smaller target area in the middle of the larger oval, however. Around the amphitheater, there are two small LEGO rock formations, which appear fixed in place with dual lock. We believe that these are obstacles to make the delivery of artifacts or game pieces into the target area harder. Similar to last year, we are seeing fewer black and white line following paths. There are only three of them on the map, and they are again strategically placed in front of select mission models available to help teams that use color sensors align their robots. As in past seasons, this year's mission models appear to use a consistent action color to show players where to interact. This year's action color seems to be red. What is interesting is that there are both flexible and stiff loops used to carry elements this year. Let's dig into the teaser and explore the mission models we can spot. We'll start at the red launch area and move around the edge of the field, and then head towards the center. It's hard to tell what this first mission is representing. The model looks like a rectangular, symmetrical box with a red lever made from an axle with a ball on top, sticking out vertically in the middle. The lever can be tilted to each of the shorter sides of the box, which appears to raise the green flaps, tilting the upper edge of the short side walls open. In one of the pictures, we have also seen the lever with its grey bottom separated from the box, so after some consideration, we think the lever might actually represent a key that must be brought from the launch area to this model, placed in the box, and moved left to right to open the two side walls. The next mission model consists of three green grassy sections, each representing a separate challenge. We think that it might actually represent different stages of a dig site, from unearthing to uncovering to restoring a dig site. The section facing the center of the field with the flexible loop will have to be removed and delivered elsewhere. The section facing the red home area looks like it needs to be rotated so that it is side by side with the third section. The third section in the back has a red activator that can be pushed to slide back the green platform in its middle. We think that this has to be moved to reveal an image on the map for points. The next mission model features a rail track that bridges the two adjoining tables. This is this year's cooperation mission. The 2025 season sees the return of the two-part cooperation mission like we saw in Cargo Connect, where the package from the opposing field's helicopter could be delivered to another target area to score extra points. There is a red frame lever in the front of the mission model that must be lifted up to tilt the minecart with an Indiana Jones-like minifigure, letting it roll onto the other table. The rigid loop on the minecart indicates that if the opposing team sends over their explorer, it must be picked up and delivered to either the home area or the amphitheater for extra points. Additionally, there is another challenge incorporated into this mission model. Underneath the tracks is a cave with gems. These likely need to be removed from the cave for points and can probably be transported to the central target area for additional points. The next mission model features a turntable. We are not sure if it starts completely upside down or tilted, but it looks like the red lever in the front of the mission model must be slid sideways from the right to the left to flip the top surface to horizontal, revealing what looks like a scale and other treasures. The larger mission model in the northeastern corner of the field features a weighted lever that must be moved to the right to move a 4-bar linkage. This action releases three boulders that roll onto the mat. 
This mission model is positioned at such an angle on the map that it looks like the boulders will roll right into the home area, where they can then be opened by hand to reveal a hidden gem inside. From one of the pictures we've seen, we think that maybe only one of the boulders has something hidden inside. We think that these hidden gems then need to be delivered to another target area for extra points. Behind the boulder mission model is a base for another rigid loop game piece. We are not sure what it is, but we think it might represent a historical stamp mill used for crushing ores. It would certainly fit with the mining theme of this corner of the field. This game piece must be picked up from its base and probably delivered into the central target area. In archaeology, explorers often encounter mechanisms to deter unauthorized entry or looting of treasure. The next mission model that looks like a large cliff appears to be such a trap. We think that when the red lever in the front of the mission model is pushed down, small blue and beige gears are ejected onto the field. We have not seen any pictures where these gears are shown in the home or central target area, so we'll have to see if it's sufficient to release the gears to score points or if they also have to be collected and delivered somewhere for extra points. The next mission model appears to represent an observation platform. We think it starts on the mat and the red activator must be pulled or pushed towards the blue home area. The scissor lift mechanism will then raise the platform. In the mission model next to the observation platform, the robot has to push down the small bucket on the back side of the mission model. The green flap on the model appears to be a hook mechanism, and when the bucket is lowered, the green flap flips over and unhooks the ring in the front of the mission model, which must then be pulled out. When the ring is pulled out of the mission model, a sled with a bucket and a blue gem inside is revealed. It probably has to be delivered to either home area or the central target area. Along the southern wall of the field are two more mission models. The yellow one closest to the blue launch area looks like a crane. The mission model features a ratcheting mechanism that needs to be pushed multiple times to raise the lid up and out of the dig site. There is a small trident on the top of the lid, probably a small easter egg to last year's season. We think the lid must be raised until it hits the yellow bar, which pivots the black axle with the one hole blue beam upwards. The mission is completed when the blue beam slides down the axle. Closest to the red launch area is what looks like a two-part mission model, as there are two prominent red activators. It looks like an ancient boat covered under a layer of sand. The red T-handle lever by the southern wall must be pulled towards the red launch area to the black line in order to peel away a three-piece sand blanket uncovering the boat. For the second part of the mission, we think that the boat, once it's been uncovered, must be moved sideways from west to east by pushing the large red activator towards the blue launch area. This lifts up the boat via a four-bar linkage. We think that both parts of this mission can be solved in any order, but when the boat is lifted first, the red T handle appears to move up and will be harder to reach or pull down. Moving towards the amphitheater near the center of the field, there is a grey excavator mission model on the northeastern edge. The small size of the activator, a two-hole beam, leads us to believe that the activator must simply be pushed down to lower the excavator onto the mat, rather than raising it. If the excavator had to be raised, there would have been a larger activator to interact with. Lowering the excavator is the opposite of the action we see in the teaser video where it was being raised. But in last year's video, we also saw the krill fall out of the whale, which was opposite of the actual mission of feeding the krill to the whale. The last mission we see features three flag markers. Flag markers are used to identify and record the locations of artifacts and other significant features during site surveys in archaeology. There are two rectangles with thin outlines on the map, which we think are the starting positions for two of the three flag game pieces. The third one probably starts in one of the home bases. These flags need to be collected and delivered to either the amphitheater in the middle or the home areas for points. Just like in past seasons, there are also six precision tokens shown in the home areas again. We don't expect any difference in how they are used in this season's game compared to previous seasons. This season sees the departure from the colorful fields and missions from the past years, but the missions in Unearthed look thrilling nonetheless. We can't wait to see how teams innovate and dig deep into these challenges starting in August. What do you think about the upcoming season? Let us know in the comments. We'll see you in August for the season kickoff. Good luck to all teams participating in First LEGO League Unearthed!